the hand and we are continuing for we go up to the top commander legends battle for Baldur's gate card card image gallery it's not on gather yet so we're getting early stuff but you know we're getting the early stuff in and let's scroll back down to multicolor and we left off right here at Jan Jansen. Uh, Jan Jansen is a weird enabler for sacrificing artifacts. Uh, it has haste, and you get a slight bonus every time you sacrifice an artifact. And it enables a lot of terrible things, <laughs> to be quite frank. It enables the uh, Icker Wellspring. Uh, there are Implement of Malice. There are other implements you can sack for free and get a draw card off of it. So you could play that. And there's also Terrarion and uh, one of the stars, the Chromatic Star, that you can you can use this with. Hold on just a minute. Okay, I needed that because I never know what kind of ridiculous crap is going on in this house. Uh, whatever the dog is barking at. So, ah, <laughs> uh, boy. Uh, then you have a uh, Mycosynth Wellspring. Uh, gets you two basic lands. So literally, you play it and it's above the curve for Jan Jansen. Uh, normally, getting two basic lands will cost you three. Um, it only goes into your hand, which is a bit of a downside, but you're getting two, two cards for one at two mana, and you have guaranteed sacrifice with your commander pretty much all the time. Uh, same thing with uh, Icker Wellspring. You're drawing two cards for two mana. Uh, and Mirror Retriever, you're retrieving an artifact for two mana. Servo schematic is also a two for one, so you're you're getting uh, two servos out of it, and if you sacrifice that to uh, Jan Jansen, so you sacrifice your crummy servo schematic, which is just a regular artifact. I mean, you're getting a token as well, so it could swing either way, but. Uh, let's say you sacrifice your crappy non-creature artifact, so you get two, two, two one-one colorless contract uh, construct artifact creature tokens out of that, which is not bad. So you you play it and you get three, so you have three one-one artifact creatures for two mana, and you can think of it that way. And then of course you have sort of the meek which is just absolutely on repeat the entire game and you're just sacrificing it you get a 1-1 one, one, it comes back into play sacrifice it comes back into play um, I'm not entirely on board with infinite combo this isn't infinite as long as you don't have a way to untap it um, I mean we're gonna look for some way to untap Jan, Zan Jan Jansen here that's convenient not infinite times I, I suppose if you find an infinite way to untap it that's fine um that's you you can do that i'm not going to completely discourage it but it's really really lame um but either way sword of the meek is by far your easiest artifact and best artifact to drop to activate off of jan jansen and that is I mean, you can again. You can play lower end spells. There are some one drops that can draw you a card or convert mana. So if you want to play those, you can. Um, but your two drops are Icker, Mycosynth, and well, you could say Mirror is a two drop. Uh, Servo. So those are your 
pr like primaries, those one, two, three, and then mirror if you have something else to bring back, and sword. So, so yeah, one, two, three, four, five. S well, you, I mean, influence there, but, and then you have like Chrome Courier, Circuit Mender, and then after that, I haven't, I, I haven't quite gone down the whole way uh, for this. It's not that great after a while. Let's see. Uh, I suppose we could get something really gimmicky going on with Desecrated Tomb and play a lot of cheap artifact creatures. Uh, whenever one or more creature cards leaves your graveyard, create a 1-1 one, one black bat creature token with flying. It'd be a weird way to return it. Like, you're returning Ornithopter and Nemnite and Phyrexian Walker off of that, potentially for free. But you have to do it one at a time. Which is doable. Um, you just have to find a card to do it with. Then you'd have a bunch of 1-1 one, one flying bat tokens. Didn't really anticipate this being 100% token-ish, especially because the primary token manipulators are green and blue. I'm not clear on what would pump them <laughs> at the moment, but Desecrated Tomb is definitely another card that would probably find its way in once we figure out, like, what is the graveyard return? I mean, we, of course, have mirror retriever so uh, and all this says is whenever one or more creatures leaves your graveyard so you mirror retriever an artifact creature back to your hand boom you get a token and there's three other two two other mirror retriever effects that can do that so I guess we're looking potentially for a lot of enter the battlefield interaction, a lot of leave graveyard interaction, and we want to like generate this stuff on an engine. I mean, maybe infinite loop if you're inclined. I'm not really inclined, uh, but preferably on an engine. Uh, Non-token creature dies, don't care, so... Till end of turn, you may cast a uh, creature spell from among the cards exile with idle endurance while paying its mana cost. As I feel, exile creature cards with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard. I, I, I guess you could play idle of endurance. It seems really terrible. Um, but then again, you may cast creature spell from among. That's only one though. Exile all creature cards with covered mana cost three or less from your graveyard until Idol of Endurance leaves the battlefield. Until in a turn, you may cast a creature spell from among cards exiled. Yeah, it's only one that's really restricting, but I guess you would play it. Um, I guess I'm gonna spin up a deck for this. So let me let me load up Cockatrice. And we're gonna spin that up and we are gonna get a little bit little bit serious about Jan Jansen before we continue down the list. So Jan Jansen Chaos Crafter. Crafter. Uh, we're gonna save that. I got to get the comma, and we'll just throw a date on it. So I know when I started. Six eight twenty twenty two, and we're gonna start tossing stuff in. As like, so. <laughs> I know there's star, like chromatic star, 
there's chromatic star and there's terrarion terrarion can't spell okay we'll go back and find terrarion later it's not that important it really sucks because it comes in play tapped and I really hate it because of that so um, then we have like Implement of Malice. There again, there's a bunch of lower end stuff that draws you one card. I'm really, really, really not inclined to play that lower end stuff that only draws you one card. Uh, that like there has to be a really good reason. Like Icker Wellspring is perfect. All right, it is a two for one that you could potentially return later. Uh, Michael Synth Wellspring, exact same idea. Servo Schematic, exact same idea. Probably should turn colors off for this, it would have made it a little faster, but yeah. I like to explore everything because I don't like turning off colors in case I want to play a different artifact deck. Still working on that artifact deck. Uh, when Imperial Recovery Unit attacks, return target creature or vehicle card with mana value 2 or less from your graveyard to your hand. Ooh, um, on attack. That, well, you can generate two for a crew. You definitely can with, with your commander. So that's a definite possibility. Uh, yep, more implements and stuff. Draw a card. There's Junk Driver. Can't play these, they're off color. Uh, let's see, mimic that now. Mirror welder is not really helpful. Pestilent Cauldron doesn't really do anything for you. stuff like retributive wand 
Which there are other ones that do less damage that tap and sacrifice instead of just like straight up sacrifice. Um, I suppose I'll have to do a sacrifice search later, but I don't really want to do it now. We're just, this is mostly just a quick look over before we get back to the actual set. Uh, I don't know. Enters the battlefield. Search your hand in our graveyard for a rune card. Put it on the battlefield attached to rune crown. If you do, search your library this way. Shuffle it. I don't know how much of an advantage a artifact tutor for a rune is going to be, but it's an idea. Oh, Salvager Ruin. Sacrifice Salvager Ruin. Choose this target permanent card in your graveyard that was put there from the battlefield this turn. Return it to your hand. That feels a little clunky, but still doable. Uh, now we're getting into like easier stuff with the three drops. Again, a little clunky, but doable. Uh, Scarecrow, return target artifact creature from your to your battlefield. Scarecrow doesn't necessarily work that well because their mana cost is going to be hyper low for this deck. I feel like the entire deck is going to be hyper low. I haven't entirely decided on that, uh, but you could go in that direction. Whenever Scrap Trawler or another artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, return to your hand, target artifact card in your graveyard with, ma with lesser mana value. So Scrap Trawler works super well when you're sacrificing something else. I don't think tokens enter the graveyard. I'll have to look that up. It's probably directly in his ruling, so let's find out. It's literally not in his ruling. Well, that's that's unfortunate. Um, so All right, 2017. Tokens going into the graveyard. Pack Fling your pack rack token. Goes in the graveyard. It was immediately ceased to exist. However, goes in the graveyard and an artifact because of the lattice. So trigger scrap trawler. Um, well, apparently, tokens trigger the graveyard. Ah. Tokens trigger the graveyard. I'll, I mean, we'll set, check the second page, but uh, 2020. Scrap Trawler, Mirror Retriever. I use some card ability to send all three graves at the same time. And all enter at the same time. Blah, blah, blah. Stack the abilities. One call, done. Show worm tokens, scrap from nurture, none of them are tokens. They all die at the same time. Their abilities will trigger. The next player gets priority. Da, 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 da. Guess I only really care about tokens, so.
All three cards will be put in your graveyard in time to be targeted by Scratch Roll or Mirror Trigger's abilities. Okay. And when I be able to return to my hand, I ordered it right. Assuming you have no artifacts in your graveyard, the beginning of zero, you can target Scrap Troll itself with Scrap Troller's ability. Referring to Worm Coil Engine, since Scrap Troller's cover manifest 3 is less than the Worm Coil Engine, Mirror True with Scrap Troller's ability referring to Scrap Troller's, that's two or less. Scrap Trawler, you can't target any artifact cards with Scrap Trawler's ability referring to Mirror Retriever since the card would less recover to mana cost than Mirror Retriever is in your graveyard. Finally, you can target Worm Call Engine with Mirror Retriever's ability. So that looks really weird and messed up, but um, Salvage Titan, no, don't play Salvage Titan. Uh, let's see. Sacrifice Worm Trail Engine. Trigger yourself and Scrap Trawler. Trigger yourself and Mirror Retriever. Trigger yourself Scrap Trawler. You draw three cards. Uh, from Reprosa. Okay. You get priority, but the trigger is a stack. Draw all five. So, in order, it doesn't seem to matter in this case. Get my token, but I have all my abilities. Rolls, you return a worm coil engine from the graveyard to your hand off a scrap trawler. You get priority pass, one gets priority passes. Top object on the stack, but there is six remaining cost resolves. You return mirror retriever from the graveyard to your hand. Yeah, so Scrap Trawler returns Worm Crawl Engine and Mirror Retriever. No, it doesn't. So, uh, this is complicated. So, Mirror Retriever dies. So, Scrap Trawler. You return Worm Crawl Engine from your graveyard to your hand off of Mirror Retriever. And then off of. Off of the ability of Scrap Trawler, you return Scrap Trawler. Uh, top of your stack ability resolves. Return Scrap Trawler from your hand. You have... So Worm Coil Engine returns to your hand off of Mirror Retriever. And then Scrap Trawl. No, okay, so. Off of Mirror Retriever, and then Mirror Retriever returns to your hand off of Scrap Trawler, and it also returns to your hand off of Scrap Trawler. Hmm. Top dungeon on the stack, Billy put there and stuff A resolves. You create. Your worm tokens, you get fired in. The targets in step six, all cards that were put there in step five. There's no requirement for how long a card must be in a given zone before you get given as a target. This seems extraordinarily complex. Uh, let's see. So Scrap Trawler, whenever Scrap Trawler or another artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, return to your hand, target artifact card in your graveyard with lesser mana value. So Worm Crawl Engine dies, you return Scrap Trawler. Scrap Trawler dies, you turn return Mirror, Mirror Retriever. Mirror Retriever dies, you return Scrap Okay, so you literally get everything back. You just have to order it correctly and probably explain it to your opponent. So that is super interesting, and that definitely feels like something Jan Jansen would do. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's weird in all kinds of ways, but totally cool. Wormcrawl engine in. 
and I guess I'm gonna have to include some stuff to like reprocess and whatnot even though it's kind of crummy but um, I haven't gone through and done the sacrifice end of the search Uh, no reason to play scrap heap. Oh, skeleton shard exists. So, skeleton shard, while not free, returning an artifact creature card from your grave to your hand for one is very good. So, skeleton shard. Uh, costs five. I don't know if I care about this because it costs five and a three. I really don't care about that. Uh, Sword of Light and Shadow is really lame. You have to deal damage. It's not worth it. So. Uh, all these old cards are just trash. I read them a million times. You always think like, oh, Urza's Miter is going to be good. No, Urza's Miter is terrible. So, don't do it. Uh, when Weather Seed Totem is put in a graveyard from play, if it was a creature, return, no, it's never going to be a creature. And also, you can't play because it's green. So, no green. Really should have cut off colors. Would have made the search a little faster, but uh, there's workshop assistant. So workshop assistant is your third mirror retriever. Um, I don't know how many you really need in the deck, honestly. Kind of question what we're returning, because you can do a draw engine with the bobbles and the retrievers. So you can do Urza's bobble, Mistress bobble. Uh, you can even do Lodestone bobble for one. Uh, Conjurer's bobble for one. And then, are these terrible? Uh, you can even do Wayfarer's bobble for three if you wanted to for like a return. Um, Obviously, it's not a free effect for everything. Uh, that's kind of what your goal is. You want a free effect. And since so much stuff is dying, we would really need to look into some dies effects as well. So enter the battlefield, leaves the graveyard, and dies effects for Jan Jansen. It, the goal feels like it's some kind of rep repetitive spit-out combo. Not quite combo, but really high synergy let's put it that way uh, okay ether works marvel whenever a permanent you control is put into a graveyard you get energy pay six energy look at the top six cards of your library you may cast a card from among the okay well ether works marvel literally does what i just said so if we sacrifice six things tokens included because to, tokens hit your graveyard um, then you get energy and it's all artifact at four mana which is pretty sweet yes it takes six things but your goal is to probably sacrifice a bunch of stuff and then hopefully you swing big look at the top six cards and get one of the big creatures like worm coil engine because we are going to play big artifact creatures. There's no reason not to. Like, there's no reason whatsoever not to. Uh, there's uh, at least two other big artifact creatures that do the exact same thing Wormcoil Engine does. They cost like nine mana. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, Arcbound Reclaimer is garbage. It goes to the top of your library. Things that go to the top of your library are garbage. Don't do it. Um, uh, 
I suppose you could play infect artifact creatures if you wanted to. Um, I don't think I am. I don't think so. I could. I feel like the deck might gain some synergy there, like an alternate win condition. Might need an alternate win condition. Oh, uh, don't forget to put in cranial plating. Um, plating? Cranial plating. Because you're generating a bunch of tokens. Yes, you're losing one, but you're trying to gain an advantage with that at the same time. It's blue. Never mind. I really should color cut. Just cut a card, put a study counter, and Grimoire of the Dead. You probably will have cards to discard, so let's let's not ignore this yet. Remove a study counter from Grimoire of the Dead and sacrifice it. Put all creature cards from all graveyards on the battlefield under control. Uh, we're really not in the colors for mill. <laughs> like we're we're in red, white, black. I mean, red could get you some mill, but we're really not there. <laughs> could you do it? Sure, you could try really hard to pull off Grimoire of the Dead. Is it easy? No. And why would you want to wait three turns? I, I don't want to wait three turns. Don't know if you want to go up in mana more for Sanctum Gargoyle. It feels really crap, honestly. Uh, enter the battlefield. You may return to your artifact card from grave to your hand. Can't think of a reason to do this when I already have three other cards doing this for three mana or less. Um, Scare Tiller, extra land from your hand seems mediocre, turn target land from your graveyard to the battlefield also seems mediocre. Uh, yes, you could do some kind of mill draw and maybe return it, but once we get above three mana, we really want more value out of our cards because we're playing a lot of jank for Jan Jansen to work, okay? So you gotta like bump up the value proposition. Um, uh, do I really wanna read this coffin? I, I just recall it being terrible. Three. Nope, I, I, I don't care, forget it, we're moving on. Trading post. You're gonna have some cards to discard. That's fine. Uh, creating goat token is worthless. Sacrificing creature. Return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. I'm thinking. Do I really want to sacrifice a creature to return artifacts? Or sacri Well, there's sacrifice and artifact draw card as well. I'm a little hard pressed on trading posts. I know there are likely better effects, but let's just toss it in. Ah, what does Triassic Egg do? Uh, 
well, I guess it doesn't take that long, but it costs a lot of mana. So you got two turns, you got to tap it twice and put a counter on it. Um, yeah, that's too much mana to wait two turns. Uh, I guess we're kind of near the end already for and leaves the leaves or graveyard on an artifact, which is just a little surprising. I guess you could play Altar of Goyf as long as your other draw effects were mill draw effects. And then your artifacts in your graveyard would be sort of a bonus. Hmm. Whenever a creature you control attacks oh, alone. No, 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 no. No, no, no. We, we're not attacking alone. Nope. Um. Minimally two or three tokens at a time. Oh no, dollhouse. Exile a creature card from your graveyard. Create a token that's a copy of the exile card, except as a zero zero construct artifact in addition to its other types. And it has this creature gets plus one plus one for each other construct you control. It gains haste until it, oh no. <laughs> Oh, uh, so you can't play Master of Ethereum because Jan Jansen's not blue. What do you get instead? Dollhouse of Horrors. And it is a horror, it really is. I mean, you're killing off a creature. Let's say it's Mem Knight. We don't care about Mem Knight. Um, and you're getting your construct. And Jan Jansen probably just made you, I don't know, from some other sacrifice, two constructs. So you got a 3-3. Three, three. And then maybe another turn goes by and you get a 5-5. Five, five. Doesn't seem great, honestly. But since it's on theme and in the search, I'm just going to include it for now. And move along. Uh, six mana seems like a lot of freaking mana for that effect. I know it's repeatable, but it's still terrible. Um, you could play Whip of Ebros. Uh, there's no real reason not to. Uh, yes, I would love to return Worm Coil Engine for a turn. Um, or something far, far, far bigger than Worm Coil Engine. To, like, kind of win me the game. Or get me back in the game. Ah, uh, yeah, there was whenever Iron Sun Enforcer or another commander you control attacks, return target artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So, this is a type of effect we're really looking for at 5 mana. Um, you want very strong effects at 4 and above. Otherwise, you're really wasting your time. Um, I mean, granted, we're only looking at artifacts right now. But there are plenty of other effects that, like, do this, which I'm somewhat surprised we went through page two and we were on graveyard and leaves for ore and artifact, and we didn't find solemn simulacrum, which I find very odd, and I'm kind of curious as to what the wording is on that because I figured it was at least one of those. Oh, it probably says dies. That's probably what it says. So... Enters the battlefield and dies. Okay, so that's the other end. Dies. Um... There's a lot of weird wordings you have to go through to get to this. Um, I, I did the die search on a previous video um, just to see if this was okay. I can tell you it's okay. It's again, it's not great. All right, I haven't found a way to like put it over the top for yet, but it just enables a lot of jank that you normally would not play. <laughs>
really don't feel like playing seven mana for random effects for a deck of many things. Seems bad. I mean, you, you could play Ujin's Nexus just because it's an artifact and use it to take an extra turn. Um, you get you exile it though, which is real bummer. Um, I want to pay five mana, which is literally the cost of an extra turn. I feel like I do. I feel like it'd be a surprise, um, and you're only doing it once, and it's something you don't normally have access to. I mean, you could do it in red and then lose the game. I don't want to lose the game, so... Oh god, Salvage Titan. I guess we could play Salvage Titan if we really, really, really wanted to. It's not a good card. It's a generic 6-4 that has crap abilities and you're probably going to end up cutting it from the deck. It, it's really not good. It's, it's just not. Uh, salvaging station. Return target non-creature artifact with a covered mana cost one or less from your graveyard to play. Whenever creatures put into your graveyard from play, you may untap salvaging station. Well, salvaging station could give you an unlimited combo. <laughs> um, let's see. Maybe. Return target non-creature artifact. From your graveyard, with covered mana cost one or less. So knock. So we'd have to have a non-creature artifact that costs one or less that creates a creature. I don't think we have one just yet. Um, hmm. You could return baubles with this and keep drawing the card. I'm really not leaning towards infinite combo, but you could create an infinite combo with a bunch of artifacts and salvaging station. That is absolutely possible. If you want to do go do it, go for it. Uh, Shroom the Hegemon is the last time I tried to make this artifact deck, and probably my other choice for an artifact commander, unless I find something better. Uh, Shroom is more of a heavy hitter though. Um, you don't play little jump cards with Shroom like I'm messing around with right now. Um, Shroom enters the battlefield, you return target artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So you play nothing but heavy hitters with Shroom. Uh, you want to draw discard with blue, mill draw with black, uh, return directly to play with black or white, or even blue, so it's literally all those colors. Um, and then ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. And you are throwing down as hard as you can, everything imaginable. And there's better stuff now, like you got Gear Hulks. Um, you saw that's three Gear Hulks right there for you. Um, you got old stuff like Enigma Sphinx. Um, slightly newer stuff like Soul of New Phyrexia. So other things are available for Shroom and they all kind of cross around in the different decks. I really don't want to exile things from my graveyard. Being a combat your turn, you may exile a creature card from your graveyard. If you do, create a token that's a copy of that card, except it's a 4 4 black zombie token against haste on the turn. So. I feel like it's just not good enough. Like, why do I want to neuter my returns? I mean, yeah, you could cheat God Pharaoh's Gift into play with Shroom and then have a lot of mill, but the ability better be amazing because you have a crappy 4-4 four, four and you just exiled it. So 
Yeah, it better be amazing. Which could go in Jan Jansen as well. But again, whatever you're exiling better have a crazy ability. Uh, Spine of Isha has always been one of the weird targets. You destroy a permanent, but then when Spine of Isha is put into a graveyard from battlefield, return Spine of Isha to its owner's hand, so you don't get a cheap graveyard return. So you could put it into the graveyard by discarding it, but then you sack it, it goes back to your hand. Yeah, it enables you to replay it. Ah, uh, it's always one of those weird effects. Just because it costs so much. Like, it's difficult to cheat it. You can cheat it. But I'd rather cheat it with, I think it's called Arxum. It's a... Let's see. I think it's D A G G S. No. I will load the other deck. So artifact X. I know it's an A. It's so that's what this deck was a previously in a previous uh, in iteration. Target artifact creatures controller sacrifices it. That player may search their library for a non-creature artifact and put it on the battlefield, then shuffle their library. So you really got to question power level here. Why, like, you, you really got to run through everything. Are you gaining an advantage from this ability? You definitely are. Uh, could you play it faster than other cards? You definitely can. Is it a little bit dependent on the commander? Oh, it's very dependent on the commander. Uh, and he does not have haste. And that whole does not have haste thing kills the crap out of him all the time. <laughs> um, that is probably the only reason you even want to try going with Jan Jansen just because he has haste. <laughs> like that's probably the only reason. Uh, you could definitely, did they identify what the pincer is here? Is it, a, is it an artifact? It's literally just a 2-2 two -two colorless token. That's weird. Uh, but summoning station is a thing. You could try playing summoning station as well. Um, again, it costs seven. And you're trying to untap it like a bajillion times. So. Oh, here, here's your other Worm Coil Engine stuff. Uh, Phyrexian Triform. But then you see stuff like the magic mirror and you sit there thinking to yourself, why don't I want to play all colors again? Isn't the magic mirror good? I mean, yes it is, it's really good. As long as you cheat it into play as early as humanly possible. <laughs> Oh, weird. Metalwork Colossus might be playable because we do play a lot of non-creature artifacts. And yeah, I could play really high cost things like the Cauldron of Eternity in a bunch of weird ways. And I would have the two artifacts available to return it to my hand if I needed to. 
Um, still seems really bad though, to be really honest. <laughs> yeah, it's a 10-10, but it has no abilities. And then Cauldron. And that's basically a starter for Jan Jansen. Uh, you can go back, and I'll just go back because I didn't add them, but um, I hop over to page one. I, I, I did add all the bobbles. I didn't add all the one drops, but you really got to question how many of those draw one card one drops you want. They're technically good enough technically good enough because you can always activate his ability you turn one you turn two you have three on the board you drew a bunch of cards off of them but you, you gotta you really gotta set a limit to the number of one drops you're doing this with uh, I didn't look at hostile I didn't do yeah I really don't want to play Creeping In. It's really trashy. <laughs> um, it's an artifact. It's on color. But you may exile a creature card from your graveyard. If you do, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life or X is the number of creature card exiled this way. I have no desire whatsoever to purposely exile creatures from my graveyard for such a terrible effect. Like it's a terrible effect. <clears throat> uh, there's Chromatic Star. Did I add Star already? I did not. You could play Sphere, but keep in mind, Sphere does not auto draw you a card. Keep that in mind. Uh, you got more weird stuff like Blood Fountain enters the battlefield, create a blood token, so you get a, two non-creature artifacts and then sacrifice Blood Fountain itself, return up to two target creature cards from grave of your hand. Paying four mana for that seems really expensive, but at the same time, it gives you another artifact to sacrifice. I've definitely gone in this direction. You could go in this direction. Uh, if you really, really needed to, you could discard draw from the blood token. I don't know why you would though. Um, I put all the bobbles in. So, yeah, there isn't a whole lot more. There's a couple things here or there, like Synthesizer, which is Exile Draw, which I really, really don't like. You don't want to exile anything unless you have to, um, or it's, if it's really good. Um, I'm really not inclined to play Experimental Synthesizer just because it exiles the top card. If you want to be a little greedy, feel free to be greedy. You can play Experimental Synthesizer. I will not. Uh, I will go into the pool and then immediately drop into the sideboard. Uh, Blood Fountain doesn't really draw you a card, so a little iffy. It has a built-in ability that you want, but could you do better? It's like Blood Fountain, you're getting two colorless construct artifact tokens off of the blood token, which is good. And then you have a second ability later on, which every artifact you play really needs to add stacked value. So 
it would work later on so you definitely could play it uh, now you have all the spell bombs available to you all right they die you got to pay the color um, wait so you have three spell bombs available to you that are one the older spell bombs will cost you two um, I don't really want to play pay two to draw one card it's totally not worth it um, if you're drawing one card you want to pay one period or zero um, so implement of combustion implement of improvement these are the other one drops you could play just because they're on color and they cost one to draw a card do you want to play them? Maybe. It depends how many of these effects you already have in the deck. Which, judging by that I have 33, 32 artifacts in the main deck already, um, I don't think I want to play, pay two to draw a card for anything. Um, definitely need more value than that. Yeah, I really don't want to pay one to draw a card. So well, let's say I did. Let's say I paid one. I play Jan Jansen. I kill that. I get two servo, two colorless constructs and draw a card. Feel like the value proposition is there. And I'd have to realistically try it out. But I can you can only include so much jank, all right? Like you could probably mess around with ten dedicated jank draw sacrifices. And then after that, I don't think there was much else. Spell bombs again. You you can play the spell bombs. They're gonna cost you one. Well, actually, they're realistically gonna cost you two. Because this was this was the question: Do I want to pay two, but also have this bit these abilities occasionally available? Maybe. Uh, so it's black spell bomb, white spell bomb, and then red spell bomb. If I missed it, that's fine. I'll get it later. Um, I really, really don't think you would want to pay the two mana for this. Really don't think so. I feel like the absolute curve to draw one card, unless the ability is amazing, like sometimes you need the Exile Graveyard ability, it should be one mana, which is the Implements. Um, Chromatic Star. So, there's the other spell bomb. Now, you are playing white, and you could turn the deck into eggs. You're probably going to need more sacrifices effects because Jan Jansen only gets you one sacrifice. So you could play Arcbound Ravenger. As soon as I see it. Ravenger. So this could literally be in your deck. And you could finally have a place that actually works on pure like pump up sacrifice but keep in mind that he is really really easy to kill uh, and you're playing commander you 
don't think there was anything else for one draw automatically. Ooh, Spear of Annihilation would actually screw you. <laughs> Like, if you needed the stuff in your graveyard, it would screw you, but it is a good searchable artifact-ish card that you might want to play, so it's not great because it can screw over your game plan, so, but it, it works in certain ways, let's just put it that way. Uh, freaking Terrarion. Okay, the Orzolith would probably be in the deck because it works with everything you're sacrificing and if you're doing Archbound Ravager and other counter effects, you're going to want this around. I don't know, tapping to discard a card and create a food token is pretty good. Uh, I don't know if I care about the second ability at all for Underworld Cookbook. But the ability to make anything an artifact seems really interesting. Um, and it costs one. Granted, food tokens gain life, which you don't need in a pinch, but, well, maybe you do sometimes, but it's not the ideal. Oh God, containment construct. Whenever you discard a card, you may exile that card. You may exile that card from your graveyard. If you do, you may play that card this turn. That is disgusting. Um, I didn't add this previously, but this is why you always give things a second look. So that is an infinite combo, actually. Whenever you discard a card, you may exile that card from your graveyard. If you do, you may play that this turn. So if you exile a zero, which you're playing an artifact deck, there is a ton of zeros available. Wow, that's the really weirdest. Uh, I mean, you need another discard effect to enable it, but there's a bajillion discard effects available uh, on a stick. Wow, that that's disgustingly strong, actually. <laughs> I wish I didn't realize that. Um, there are many, many, many free discard outlets that you can do on repeat. Oh, God, I guess I have to do a search for that now. That's gross. Um, let's see what's on color. Okay, so it's gonna say discard um, is going to be not green and not blue. And it's already got converted mana cost. I don't know if I want it to be a creature. I'd really like to exclude the tap symbol, but unfortunately, as I've learned many times over doing gather searches, sometimes the tap symbol means that it also does something else.
So we're probably skipping over all these lands to be realistic. You want a quick look? It's just I know, I know there's pretty much nothing. I mean, there's some effects that draw discard that are lands, but looking for something that's 100% repeatable, not tappable. Oh no, you could madness for zero as well and return black creatures like on demand in an infinite loop. Sort of, well actually no, it would cost you one, but um Okay, so yeah, tap symbol sucks. Tap symbol sucks. Oh no, Confessor. Confessor could give you an infinite combo with life gain and discard. Oh no. An old Odyssey uncommon that hasn't been reprinted in 20 plus years. Or common, I meant to say, but. Oh no. That's so nasty. I really should have turned off sorcery and instant and whatnot. Uh, most of the stuff that does what we want costs two, so we're not going to see much else until we get to two. It's always nice to check and make sure there's not anything new. I'm waiting. I know it's coming up. I know I've done the search before, and there's definitely stuff I cost too that does not tap like trashy cards like Stern Constable. And even Underworld Cookbook, not that great in the scheme of things because it taps. Um, but it does create an artifact token, that's important. Oh, we can play on Earth. That's not bad. Come on, where's my first two drop? Come on, where is my two drop? Where is it? Ooh, Cabal Initiate. Discard a card, Cabal Initiate gains lifelink until on a turn. 
don't play Cabal Initiate just because it enables you. There has to be something better. It can cost two, three, four, doesn't matter what it costs. Well, it really shouldn't cost more than four, but um, let's see. I'm just looking for one good thing. One good thing and then I'll stop. Because I want to get back to the other card search. Come on, one good two drop. That's all I'm asking for, looking for. Don't suck. Don't be a sucky two drop. only once you want you really 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 want more than once because we saw the combo effect we want the combo effect you don't have to play it but I want you, you it's, it's available I know it's 100% available we've seen, seen some really crappy enablers so far with Cabal earlier um, we are not doing that I suppose you could really jump and jive around and play Liliana's Caress. I hadn't entirely thought of that with um Ah that's too that's too complicated to think about right now. I just <laughs> but let, let's roll along until we find the good discarder. I just need one. Oh, come on. Come on. One good discard effect. Just one besides this enchantment I'm thinking of that makes two two zombies and requires that two cards. Flying. Minus two. I bet that's going to be the card we find first though. First strike. It dies after the second card. Tap itself. I guess you could do that on repeat. Oh yeah, I'm going to keep tapping this guy. Tap, tap, tap. He's indestructible. Uh, I don't know what that gets you. Oh, interesting. So, discard a card, make artifact. Well, oh wait. 
I know it is. Okay, it's another guy. Okay. That's pretty much on par with. Actually, is that worse? That's worse than a cookbook. Well, it gets you a creature. I guess it depends. Cookbook is free. So. Discard a card. Vampires you can. You control, get plus one, plus one to one turn, act, uh, activate only once each turn. Come on, man. bad effects uh, I feel like the first card I'm gonna find is that zombie card draw a card then discard a card unless you exile it no am I making two two zombies is the best possible effect again <laughs> Is that, is that what I'm going to find again for this whole draw discard effect? I, I just can't think of the name right now, so I'd literally just go to it. There it is. Zombie infestation. Discard two two cards. Create a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token. Ba-boom. We found it. And now we're into three drops. Which there are better three drops. And really, you probably need to do one at a time. I think you actually have to. Where is it? There it is. Whenever you discard a card, you may exile a card. You may exile that card from your hand. Oh god, whenever you discard a card, you may exile that card from your graveyard. If you do, you may play that card this turn. So it has to be a zero, and there's tons of artifact zeros, and there's tons of artifact creature zeros. So you can go either way. Um, you don't want zombie infestation because you have to do two, and that really doesn't work for you. There are other earlier two drops that you can use that are really crap, but they do enable you. So I guess we have to find a better three drop because you really don't want to use those crap two drops unless you really have to. I thought for a second I could do use Barbarian Bully, but then it was only once each turn. That sucks. So. I'm going to find Nantuko Husk. I feel like the first thing I'm going to... I think Nantuko Husk might be... I can't remember if it's Sacrifice or Discard right now. Let's see. I guess I'll just search it. Up on another search. Man up. Oh. Man to go. Plus. Sack a creature. Okay, so I'm a little off base there. Is 
You can still do it, but it doesn't interact with your combo piece, which says discard a card. Casting Bones is probably the one of the weirdest, oldest effects I've seen in quite a while uh, for black draw discard. Whenever Enchanted Creature dies, draw three cards, then discard one of them. And it's so specific, like you have to literally discard one of the three you drew. It's so weird and old. So, um, I know we're gonna hit a three drop eventually that does something good. I hope so. <laughs> like I've been going for a while on this. You could play Dying to Serve, but you only can do it once a turn. That seems really, really lame and seems like an entirely different deck. So. Oh, Fairy. Fairy Macrobay. Target your opponent's graveyard. It's a one discard enabler, Is has a good effect. Um, you could argue you go back and play some of the crappier t uh, two drops and the even crappier I think there was a one drop antelope uh, I think you get first strike or something so we are actually looking for good abilities um, not just anything Oh, uh, here it is. Discard an artifact card from your hand. Flesh Grafter gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. So this is the type of effect we were looking for. How would you like a million toughness? Like million... Uh, I'm going to run through my infinite combo loop here with my Flesh Grafter and my artifacts. And I now have a one million, one million, or a ten billion, ten billion, or a ten trillion, ten trillion. Attack you. Have a nice day. Or fling. Have a nice day. Uh, again, I've told my playgroup that I am not going to play any more infinite combos. I've told myself that as well. Um, just because it's fun for you doesn't mean afterwards that's really really lame <laughs> so uh, I guess let's just hit the, through the end of the page there might be something else uh, fodder tosser is okay it's not like repeatable unless you have another interaction effect which you very well could because if you play Jan Jansen the combo player, which you very much so could because it's starting to seem really easy um, to get some of these combos off, then uh, yeah, you probably have a way to untap. <laughs> And then you have stuff like Glinthorn Buccaneer. Whenever you discard a card, I mean, there's a 
there's a different deck around this there's a whole different idea um, but you could do this you could do enter the battlefield uh, the red god card would be really good for enter the battlefield um, Which one was that? Whenever another creature earns the battlefield under your control, Porphyros deals two damage to each opponent. Ba boom. So you could argue you could play an artifact deck with just Perforos as the commander, and you definitely could. Um, Jan Jansen is mostly just a weird, quirky thing uh, that you can play weird, quirky effects with. And I'll give another breeze through of another page quick. Um, Because I kind of, well, you're playing black, so you could search for anything. Well, that's enough of that for Jan Jansen. Um, if you want to go combo Jan Jansen, feel free. There's plenty of free discard effects, even though they're terrible available. You got Hellbent Raider as another really bad discard effect that's available. Um, but it it's doable and surprisingly so um, with a lot of different things <laughs> I might get back to this I just really wanted to go over it so yeah I might get back to that uh, give me just a minute Okay, so if you want to ch play Jan Jansen, the ultimate sacrifice artifact enabler, go for it. It seems really fun. Um, you can catch the other video I had earlier if, if you're just seeing this one for Jan Jansen. It's still on Twitch. It's going to be up on YouTube eventually. Um, and it just looks like so much fun. Like, it... it like the amount of jank that I can enable and then in addition to that if I want to really be that guy I can play eggs modern with Jan Jansen all right I don't know what year this is from if anything I'm looking for the older eggs um, 2020 is probably a little bit too new but so this is like an eggs modern deck and this is probably let's see search your library for a creature and sorcery card oh that's off color who cares but you have faith's reward return to the battlefield all permanent cards in your graveyard that were put from the battlefield this turn so if you have more than one way to free sacrifice an artifact and you want to throw down face rewards you're going to be doing great <laughs> Um, and I know for a fact that there's e and I mean you can play grape shot. Uh, you can literally play all this stuff or most of it. You can't play blue, but um, 
What's the other one? We, we, we gotta find like really old eggs before they started banning the crap out of it. Um, actually, let's... Uh, da, 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 case rewards. Uh, we gotta do like a time search to actually find this. Custom range. I need like 2,000, because I don't remember exactly when eggs is, to like 2015. Here we go. Really old article from 2014. Exactly what I wanted. Uh, lots of blue stuff. Is this the eggs I am thinking of? Terrarium, Chromatic Star, Chromatic Spear, Code Shredder, and Wicked Wellspring, Mindstone. Oh, yeah, Clark Clan Ironworks. Yeah, face reward, open the vaults. Oh, what the crap, where's the other one? I know there's another one, so I feel like it was banned really early. And I know it costs like three. Um, how far back in time do I need to go? How far was this banned? Maybe you should just look up, you know what, modern ban list. Got the commander ban list up. I don't, I don't want to look through everything, but uh, let's see. That's yeah, so a new window. Uh, what's the next one? 2012? That old enough? There you go. Second Sunrise. Is Second Sunrise banned? Don't be banned. Don't be banned. Not banned from Commander. That's excellent. <laughs> oh god, you can make eggs from Jan Jansen. It's so trash and so good. You can make eggs, Commander. Oh god, Jan Jansen. Jan Jansen's a dirty little guy. Somebody did this back at Wizards on purpose because they want to play eggs again. Let's go back to that eggs article. Let's see what we got. Lotus Bloom? Uh, oh, yeah, 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 because Lotus Bloom returns to for free. So it's in your, yeah, yeah, yeah. For this graveyard. And Second Sunrise says. There you go. Each player returns to play all artifact creature, enchantment cards, and land cards that were put into his or her graveyard from play this turn. That's dirty, dirty, dirty stuff. You reshape into it. Okay. Tinker's banned. Don't get any ideas. So. Um. <laughs> oh god. I could use Pyrite Spellbomb as a win con. That's so gross. So gross. Um, and Disciple of the Vault, of course. I was thinking of that as well. <sighs> oh god, Jan Jansen is a combo enabler and it's eggs. Oh god. I don't think I wanted to find this out. <laughs> That there is a very capable eggs modern, uh, not modern, commander deck. Oh, your friends will hate you so much. So much. Let's look at this. See what's, let's see what's like on color. Oh, yeah, yeah. Eggs fin to fetch lands. Oh, God. That's so dirty. Um, 
and ghost quarter oh god that's so dirty <sighs> wow uh, I can't remember what fetch lands are on color right now arid mesa arid mesa is on color God, ley line of singularity. Oh no. Actually, that doesn't really come up that much in Commander. You can't be targeted with spells or abilities your opponents control. Um, but it's a fixer. I like it. Oh, yep, defense grid. Can't play reshape, which blows. But there are white artifact search fix that get it to your hand or from the graveyard. Red does this. I know it's gonna be a little clunky in these colors. I know it is. Um, Freaking eggs, man. Star, Sphere, Conjurer Sphere. I didn't want to play Sphere, but you definitely could play Sphere. Oh, I can't just select one. You could probably pour over this entire eggs deck just to be realistic. It doesn't have to be with Jan Jansen, but when you have a always enabled sacrifice artifact commander with haste, I'm really inclined to say Jan Jansen just because it's really clear that that's what the intent was. Um, you lose out on some good stuff like Ether Spellbomb, you really do. Face Reward, Second Sunrise. Ah, oh, you lose out on Noxious Revival. <sighs> Tough. You can substitute some of those cards. They won't, you can substitute some of them. It won't be as crazy fast as you want to be, but you could probably still make it fast. <laughs> um, how many cards do I got in here? 69? Let's just add like junk lands. Let's uh, add a bunch of mountains quick. 69 is way too many cards. Do I have any duplicates? So obviously you'd have to really start cutting down like what really works for you in eggs. Um, but we're just gonna add a couple bajillion mountains right now to get our total count, I guess up to 100. 32 lands. The 30 lands seems like too many. Um, okay, a little bit too many. Uh, you know what? Sure, we're, we're low on lands. 33 lands, why not? It doesn't even have all the correct stuff in it yet, but I just want to see what I, like what a quick shuffle draw does. I mean, everything is close to being an egg effect right now. Did I include win cons? <laughs> Not many. Um, did I include creatures? Uh, that are win cons at all? 
So Disciple of the Vault's the only one right now, which I guess Flesh Crafter. Nah, okay, let's just let's swing for the fences. Lands don't matter for their color right now. Draw seven. And we gotta find Jan Jansen. Where is it? Why am I having trouble seeing this? Sword by type. Did I seriously not add Jan Jansen? What the crap? Did I not add Jan Jansen Chaos Crafter? I definitely did. That's two. Oh, Jesus. He's in my freaking hand. I'm looking in the deck for him. I didn't look in my hand yet. Okay. Draw a different card. Straight up, this hand feels way, way, way too good. Like it has Lotus Bloom in it. That's kind of absurd uh, scenario for you, but let, let's just play it out. This is our turn one. Lotus Bloom. And what do we got? Got a land. And we have a one drop bobble-ish effect. I don't think I was that light on the land, so my hand is kind of disappointing for that reason. Oh, I drew land. I am a lucky guy. Um, Tales cast each card, each card greater. That ain't happening. Drunk driver is a no. Uh, I could sack this, gain two life. I probably should right now. Uh, again, these are any color. So yeah, let's let's do that. Sack, gain three life because uh, I got a distinct feeling that my draw is crap, and it's crap. Uh, play chromatic star. You don't want to kill chromatic star yet. You want to see what your neck draw is. Well, you have to because you're out of mana, but. Okay, so our next draw, remove the counter. Um, I don't think Sphere of Annihilation was really going to be in the deck because it ruins your entire plan. So let's, let's draw a different card. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, I guess we're drawing with Chromatic Star. Well, damn. <laughs> Uh, I wasn't even light on the lands either. I did. Oh no, I was super light on the lands. 33. That's way too few. This should be at least 37. Else I'm never going to draw any. And for, for like eggs type effects, they only draw one. So they only draw like the next card up. So we missed the land drop, obviously, this is just a tester, but Ugh, missing that land drop is like burning my butt. Any one color, Let, let's pretend we have all the colors. Um, where's Jan Jansen? Boom. Oh, that's not exalted. That's graveyard, boom. Okay, Lotus Bloom saved our butt. Um, Jan Jansen's in play, enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one -one call as Servo, Servo, uh, he makes Constructs, so 
So, boom, well, it doesn't tap, but we get another one. And then we get those non creatures, so we get two 1 1 colors constructs. Second one, a defender. No, delete. That's better. Okay, so we. So Jan Jansen with one card is like the hyper efficiency I'm talking about. Yes, we missed a mana drop, whatever. Maybe this doesn't go full blown eggs. Um, we'll do another test hand in a minute. It is really land light. Like I'm playing four less lands than normal. Okay, so we got our stuff in. That's all good. Good and wonderful, we draw. We actually have a surprising number of artifacts in the graveyard, which I normally seriously hate on artifacts in the graveyard effects, but if it's good enough, I'll really consider it. Because um, we got four right now, it's turn five, I believe. Um, so we are really crapping out for land right now. So I guess I'm going to sacrifice an artifact creature. Uh, it doesn't matter what. Kind of the servo. And get my two treasure tokens. So Feels clunky. I missed that one land drop. It feels really clunky. All right, let's let's uh, let's do a redo. We missed the land drop, which feels unusual, and we don't have an appropriate number of lands, regardless. So let's add thirty-seven, which is the number of lands I would be playing. It is more than 100, whatever. Damn, my luck is bad. All right, redraw. Two lands, seems normal. Okay. Okay, turn one for Jan Jansen. No, oh, we do have a small egg. We have two small eggs. Okay. Turn two for Jan Jansen. Okay, I guess this is an example of small eggs. Okay, we sacrifice probably to draw a card. And that blows. Origin Spellbomb does not interact the way the same Pyrite Spellbomb does. So I guess we're doing Pyrite Spellbomb. And probably double nixing Origin Spellbomb. Well, well, Origin Spellbomb works better with Jan Jansen. All right, Pyrite Spellbomb does a better job by itself. So we draw and onto draw. We now have turn three, Jan Jansen mana. And that's marked in my turn three. So 
I guess I kind of go back to my point of this cost too much. Because if I do, it's, I, don't, I don't get to draw off of it. And that's kind of a problem. All I do, I, I get um, my constructs, but I didn't get to draw a card. Uh, we're going to ignore the fact that it has Defender right now. <laughs> or, you know what? I, I don't want stupid stuff like that up there. I'm typing too quickly. Okay. Okay, we're on turn four. Turn four draw. Ideally we should have drawn last turn or we should have gotten more value out of this. Um, so again you don't want to do certain things. Uh, if we had that other red card for example synthesizer that would have sucked because it's only until till end of turn and yeah we would have exiled our second sunrise. That we just drew. You don't want to exile your second sunrise. Okay. So we have three mana. We could make two more mana for five. What can we gain an advantage on? This is really, really the wrong spell bomb for this. But okay, our player discarded a card, so I won't be discarding cards right now. I could sacrifice artifacts with Flesh Crafter. Uh, Desecrate Tomb whenever one or more creature cards leaves your graveyard. Create a one-one flying bat creature token. There are actually none in my graveyard at the moment. Um, we could straight up deal five damage. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> um. It could return a spell bomb. I don't know if I want to though. Hmm. Don't want to do this. I could get to five mana or sacrifice one of the other things. I feel like Confessor is really greedy and definitely not in this deck, so draw a different card besides Confessor. Actually, Exile Fall. That's actually a really good example of a curve. Like, what do you want to do on turn uh, four, which we're on right now? We missed our land drop. So worst case, it already happened. Um, do we want to play Mirror Retriever draw card to try and guarantee the land drop? I feel like, no, we'd miss the draw again because it costs one. Hmm. Can make more creatures. Hmm. Play this. I guess I kind of have to play this. Uh, so Dan Jansen would make my two treasure tokens. I'd throw this guy down. Um, we're on turn five. I don't know if that was the best play. Mm. 
<laughs> it's hard to believe I'm low on mana. I'm really, really struggling with why am I low on mana. Um... Okay, throw down Mirror Retriever. Sacrifice Mirror, mirror Retriever. I get two treasure tokens. That's in the graveyard. I really gotta find a way to untap Jan Jansen. Like, I don't need infinite combo. I just need like decent combo here, man. Like, I wanna keep sacrificing things. And this is definitely holding me back. Uh, I got three mana. Oh, I can literally play Second Sunrise. That's cool. Um, so the only thing I want in Graveyard is Mirror Retriever. And I'm returning preferably a better spell bomb than these, but um, that cost me two for the effect, or actually that cost me two for the effect either way. That cost me two for the effect either way. <laughs> Okay, so we got spell bombs. So there's no way for me to second sunrise. Well, no, there's no way for me to second sunrise. I, I'll get back mirror retriever, but that seems really terrible. Hmm. I really, really need Artifact enters the battlefield. I really need Disciple of the Vault. Or enters the battlefield or dies. Something like that. So if I get I get back Spellbomb to my hand from Retriever. This guy attacks. And this seems really dumb for how powerful his ability is to be returning Mirror Retriever. But that's what I'm returning. And then I return Origin Spellbomb to my hand. And then I could play the two spell bombs. But I'm missing a piece. I'm missing a piece for this to go click, 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 return, 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 click, 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 return, return, return. But you get the idea. Like, this can actually be done now in Commander because you have an enabler that starts the eggs process for you. It literally gives you eggs to a certain extent. It gives you treasure tokens. I'm sure this could be made a lot better. I'm sure. And I might get back to it. But I think for today, I had planned on going back in and continuing, well, let me save this, continuing with the review of the set. I think it's been two hours. I think that's good for today. <laughs> and that's my second video describing how good Jan Jansen is. We are going to move over to the next card. One over. Just a little. Just a little. Uh, in the next stream and continue a review of this set. Uh, I think that's all the searches I need to do. All the excitement for Jan Jansen. Um, and we have... Commander's Eggs. Commander's Eggs. 
with your new buddy. Where are you, buddy? Where are you? Jan Jansen. I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun making it. The fact that you can literally enable modern eggs now is crazy. And I love it. Absolutely love it. You gotta work a little bit harder. Just a little. Just a little bit harder. But you get modern eggs. You get the auto sacrifice. Which you don't need per se. Like you can go the traditional eggs route and pay the mana and do that. All right, you can pay the one, sack it, pay the one, sack it. Um, but the idea that it enables Icker Wellspring, all right, and you get a two for one egg is really, really interesting. You kind of need it to because your deck is enormous. Let, let's be real, it's enormous. Um, three drop that recurs your eggs. Not something else that recurs your eggs. And then, then as long as you got the mana here, you can churn and burn this baby up. Alright. You can churn and burn with some mocks. Alright. Not actually you could use as long as Jan Jansen is in play, you can use Mox Amber. Yeah. Okay. Finally Mox Amber is playable. Um, you can't use Mox Diamond. You can't afford that much uh, for. Uh, you can't exile or discard a land card. Won't won't happen. Uh, let's look, look through the non non banned Moxes as soon as we find them. Opal, Opal is a hyper enabler. You need it. Uh, I thought there was one more. Uh, Talonite. 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 How am I returning Talonite? Graveyard to the battlefield? Am I doing that all the time, though? Seems really slow. Then again, Lotus Bloom is three mana. Also has Suspend. How am I getting this into my graveyard? Red discard and then return from to the battlefield somehow? I feel like Talonite is trash, but it is available and doable and a zero. Oh, uh, what's the other one? There's one more zero. Uh, crap, let's load the other deck. You could do Expedition Map, but then it adds you zero mana, so don't do that. Um... I mean, sorry, Everthorn Chalice, I meant to say. Oh, Jewel Lotus, that's weird. Um, technically a zero, but literally can only be used for your commander and gets you no mana. Yeah. There's no point to playing him earlier or even playing this. Um, Oh, Lion's Eye Diamond. Um, mm, 
Mm, I really, really don't want to blow my whole hand. Like, having the mana is great. But... What am I doing? Ability on the stack. Respond to Lion's Eye Diamond? Does that work? And then... That... Ability on the stack. I respond to my own ability. With... Hmm. Let me think about this for a minute. Okay, Lotus Petal. Mana Crypt's the other one. Yeah, okay. Lotus Petal and Mana Crypt. Okay, so you got three, four, four, four good zeros, I believe, uh, in here for mana. So you got Lotus Petal, Lotus Bloom is a little temperamental, but Lotus Petal is a guarantee. Um, Crypt for two, uh, Amber and Opal for one, maybe Talonite. Maybe. <laughs> My issue is it either has to come from hand slowly or return from graveyard, which we're definitely doing, but it's not immediately useful. And I can say the same thing for the other suspend Sol ring. couple more things but the deck is still too big I mean once you once you add too much stuff um, to eggs it gets clunky and you really have to be on point with your mana amounts some of these cards I would just toss out when I see them because they're definitely not into a full-blown eggs combo deck um, or not comp well it kind of is combo let's call it hyper synergy jan jansen okay turn one looks pretty cool so we're throw down now this was the discard effect um this may or may not happen this seems Having an extra combo searchable way, it seems, seems kind of lame, but you could definitely do it. Um, okay, I played the Wellspring. This seems like best possible play for Jan Jansen. The two drop draw two, which there are three. There might be another one, but like three I'm thinking of right now. Because there's two wellsprings, another servo creator, so I believe there's three, yes. Okay, so turn three. We have Talonite. Talonite really blows. But since it's here, we're going to zero it into, well, actually, what does Trading Post do? Discard a card. Gain four life. So we would probably discard Talonite. Sacrifice creature, return trigger, artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. So that would blow. Getting Talonite back to our hand would really blow. Um, all right, let's play Jan Jansen and think about this. So, oh, this, I forgot to do the ability. 
Search your library for a basic land card. Reveal it with your hand. Okay, so two. I'm just getting the two now because it dies and gets another one. And I get my two constructs. These are in my hand. I guess we're playing Talonite. I could keep it and discard it. Um, making goat token is terrible. I could sacrifice a creature, one of the servos to return wellspring to my hand. Um, I might want to, I probably do want to do that. Um, sacrifice an artifact and draw a card. Mm, or would I just sacrifice an artifact and draw a card? Not sure. Because Wellspring gets me two, but it just gets me lands. I don't need any more land. You could argue it's just thinning your deck. Well, it is, but discarding a card. Oh, crap. Whenever you discard a card, you may exile that card from your graveyard. If you do, you may play that card this turn. I wonder how that interacts with Talonite. Because if this was a different zero, okay, so let's let let's let's ignore this fact about whether this really works with Talonite. Discard Talonite, exile, I may play it. Pretty sure I still have to do the suspend because it has no mana cost. <laughs> And it's play. Um, so let, let's just, for the sake of this, I really hate Talonite, and I want this to be Opal just for, just for sake of argument. Where's Opal? Come on. First one wins. Um, it could be Amber too. Um, they both do the same thing in this deck. Literally exactly the same thing because Jan Jansen has to be in play for it to probably get something going. Um, to opal. They thankfully have enough artifacts to activate opal <laughs> now that I'm looking at it. Um, so I probably would play opal this turn. I activated Jan Jansen. I have one more mana because of opal. So nothing else unfortunately. But we're on turn four. So turn four, Jan Jansen. Nobody targeted your Jan Jansen yet because he's a janky guy that doesn't do much of anything. So we could create two treasure tokens or we could create two more servos. Like I could sack Opal and get it back and draw a card. That's what I was really debating here. Because Wellspring doesn't do anything for me because I need more threats. And right now I'm drawing lands. So after like tw the. Yeah. Yeah. 
if I could purposely recur something with this because I will end up having to discard if I keep doing Wellspring. I don't know what that gained me though. I still have to draw an artifact to enable it. Okay, so this is what we got. We got Jan Jansen, we got Trading Post. Trading Post is in play. Uh, so sack a creature. I could return artifact. Doesn't seem good. Uh, sacrifice an artifact. Uh, draw a card. We're kind of stuck. So we really have to do that. Draw a card. Oh, we got a bobble. We're not a zero zero bobble though, a one bobble. Play one bobble. Um I forget if I have to tap all the way. I think I have to tap all the way, which really blows in this scenario. Instead of just getting the card. Yeah, you have to tap and pay the one. So it's a crappier bobble that you probably want to consider cutting. Um, Cause if it was either of the other bobbles, I would just auto draw the card. But we still have more tricks up our sleeve or more sacrifices to go. Uh, so I guess we're gonna sacrifice our artifact construct, get two treasure tokens, good enough they're gonna be sacrificed in a minute oh picture did load all right so we get our two, tre two treasure tokens and boom we throw down our cranial plating um so that's not bad and Do I have to sacrifice my cranial plating? I think I went too far. Or I'd have to sacrifice opal? Yeah, I went a little, I, went a little, I got too greedy. So no cranial plating. Um, okay, so I was way too greedy. Uh, bobble. Ah, uh, you know what? I think that's enough for tonight. It's been over two hours. So I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. This has been Channel 35, HND, signing off. Um, and apparently today was sponsored yet again by Jan Jansen, just because of all the jank that he enables. It's fun jank. I didn't expect eggs to come of it, but who knows? Have a good night, guys.